Welcome back class. For the last couple days, we've been practicing how to solve systems of equations when the two equations are both written in standard form. And we've been solving those using substitution. I'm really excited about today's lesson because I'm going to teach you an easier way to solve systems of equations when both of the equations are written in standard form. That, um, this new way to solve problems is called elimination. Okay, and elimination is a method for solving systems where you add or subtract the equations to eliminate one of the variables. Okay, so let me give you the steps on how we're going to solve these. All right, the first thing that you have to do is both of your equations are in standard form. You just have to make sure that the equations are lined up correctly. So you want your x's on top of your x's, and you want your y's on top of your y's, and your constants on top of your constants. So we'll make sure everything gets lined up correctly. The second thing that you're going to do is you're going to add or subtract the equations so that you can eliminate one of the variables. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Um, today, we're going to focus only on adding the equations. We're not going to worry about subtracting yet, but pretty soon we'll be able to subtract equations also. The third step, after you've added the equations, you're going to solve that resulting equation for one of the variables. And then finally, after you solve and find one of the variables, you're going to substitute that variable back in. Um, you can substitute that variable back into either one of the equations to solve for the other variable. So those are the four steps that we're going to use to solve systems using elimination. All right, so here's an example of a systems um, problem. And both of these equations are written in standard form. And I'm going to show you the easy way to solve this rather than um, solving for a vari variable and then substituting it into the other problem. Okay, in elimination, the first step is to make sure that your equations are lined up correctly. So I've got my x's on top of my x's, my y's on top of my y's, and my constants on top of my constants. The next step that we're going to do, step number two, is we're going to either add or subtract these two equations. And like I said, today we're going to simply add all of them. So you don't really have to worry about the subtracting part. The cool thing that happens here is I'm just going to add these two equations. I'm going to add the x's together, I'm going to add the y's together, and add the constants. Okay? So 3x plus 1x equals 4x. And then y plus a negative y, or y minus y, those just cancel out and you get 0y. You can write that here if you'd like. But really, we don't even need to write that, because y minus y is just 0. It cancels out. We got rid of one of our variable. OK, and then I add my constants together, and 18 plus 10 is 28. And now I have one equation with one variable, and I can solve and find out what x equals now. So I just divide both sides by 4. Twenty-eight divided by four is seven, so I get x equals seven. There's half of my answer. I need to substitute that back in. Now I'm on to step number four. Now I need to substitute this value back into one of these equations and solve for the other variable. So I solve for y. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it back into this top equation. But you could choose either equation. It doesn't matter which one. Um, you just plug in your x into one of these equations. I'll do the top one. Three. Instead of x, I'm going to use 7 plus y equals 18. Okay, so we just solve it. 3 times 7 is 21. And then I subtract 21 from both sides. And I get y equals negative 3. So I know my x is 7. I know my y is negative 3. So the solution to this system is 7, negative 3. And we solve that using elimination. Let's do another example. All right. Again, I have a systems of equations here. 
They're both in standard form, so I'm going to look to see if I can do some easy elimination here to solve this system. Step number one, make sure that your equations are lined up correctly. Your x is on top of your x's, your y's on top of your y's, and your numbers on top of your numbers, your constants on top of your constants. Okay? They are. The second step then is to add these two equations together to get a new equation. So I'm just going to add them. I've got 10x plus a negative 2x is 8x. I have negative 3 plus 3. So negative 3 plus 3 is 0. That, those just cancel each other out. They disappear. Those y's are gone. And I've got 18 plus 6, which is 24. Okay, so my new equation is 8x equals 24. So step number three is to solve this new equation for x. Pretty simple. I just divide by 8. And I get x equals 3. Now that I know my x value, I can substitute it into one of these equations and solve for y. This time I'm going to use the second equation just to show you that you can choose any equation you like. doesn't matter which one. I'm going to go ahead and substitute this 3 in for the second equation's x. All right, so I just rewrote this second equation, except instead of an x, I put a 3. And now I'm going to go ahead and solve it. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Then I just add 6 to both sides. I get 3y equals 12. Divide both sides by 3. I get y equals 4. So I know my x is 3, my y is 4. The solution then would be 3 comma 4. Again, let's talk about what that solution means. If we were to graph these two lines, that's the point where these two lines would intersect each other. They'd cross at 3 comma 4. Also, whenever you plug 3 for x into one of these equations, both times you're going to get 4 for your y value. Okay, that's the point where these two equations are equal, where these two equations are the same. All right, excellent. That's example number two. Let's do one last example. All right, in example number three, again, I have two equations. I'm solving a system here. They're both in standard form. So step number one, I just want to make sure my x's are on top of my x's, my y's are on top of my y's, and my constants are on top of my constants. Step number two then is I'm going to go ahead and add these two equations together to create a new equation. And this time I've got negative 3 plus 3, which is 0, so my x's just cancel out. For my y's, I've got 4 plus, remember there's an imaginary 1 here. So 4 plus 1 is 5y. And then 1 plus 4 is 5. <clears throat> I think the important thing to look at on this problem is, in this case, our x's canceled each other out. Every problem that we've done so far, our y's have always canceled out, and we've been left with x's. But it doesn't have to be that way, as is the case in this example. This time, the x's cancel each other out and we're solving for y. Okay? Same thing. No big deal. We divide both sides by 5. And we know that y must be equal to 1. So now that we know what y is equal to, we can substitute that into either one of these equations here and find out what x is equal to. So I'm going to go ahead and put it into, I don't know which one looks good. Let's do the second equation. Okay? I just picked one. I'm going to do the second equation. I'm going to rewrite it. 3x plus 1y equals 4. Instead of y, I put a 1 there. I solve 1 times 1 is 1. 
3x plus 1 equals 4. I subtract 1 from both sides. And I get 3x equals 3. Then I divide by 3. And I get x equals 1. Again, we got kind of lucky here because both our x and our y are the same. But when you're writing your solution, remember that it's very important that you list your x value, your x solution first. So that's 1. And then our y solution is also 1 in this case. So again, we got kind of lucky. But you have to be careful because what a lot of students will want to do is they'll want to put the y first because they solved for y first and they got 1. But it doesn't matter which order you solve them. It doesn't matter if you find the x first or the y first. When you write your answer in the ordered pair, x always comes first and then y. Okay, so just be very careful when you're writing your answer that you get them in the right order and that you get your solution correct. That's it for the example problems that I have for you. If you would, in your notes, go ahead and finish those other examples that are, that are there for you and see how you do on those. We'll talk about the answers when um, we come back to class. I do have one math joke for you today. It's kind of your lucky day. Um, and that joke is, what do the two friends in algebra class call each other. It has to be algebras. All right, that's all that I have. Um, good luck on those example problems. I hope they come easy to you. And if you have any questions or anything, please jot those down in the notes so we can talk about them in class. Thanks. Bye.